Hey guys, Susie Homesteader here, and I'm going to show you guys how to make ginger beer. We're going to start today, we have to start with the uh, ginger uh, bug or the ginger plant. It can be called either one. And so we're going to ferment that and let it grow, and then in a few days I'll come back and make the second part of the video, and then the third part when we bottle it. So today is number one, and it is the... Uh, the ginger bug or also the ginger plant. You will have to feed this to keep it alive, but that I'll explain all that in a little bit. So let's get started. You'll need a container. A glass container is preferable. Um, this is one of, it seals up, but any like a mayonnaise jar or anything like that will work. Just needs to be sort of large because you're going to add to it, but this is actually more than you need. This size is bigger than what you have to have. So inside this glass jar, I have my sugar, which I use um, this organic raw sugar, and I have four, yeah, four teaspoons of sugar in there. And we're going to add the juice plus the pulp, everything, because it'll be strained out. So there's seeds and everything in here. So at the end, it'll all be strained out. But the juice of two lemons. I'm going to put that in. Yay. Okay, and we're going to the lemons. Now, this is, let's see, now we're going to put the ginger in. And I grated up my ginger root today. And I wanted you guys to see how much ginger I got out of a piece of, like, this big. And I'll tell you why. It's because I used this microplane. It is amazing. It gets all of the ginger, no problem. It shreds it, it whatever you call it. Um, yeah, it shreds it, I guess. And just fine. I mean, so you're going to get such good flavor of ginger out of here. Okay, so you start out, you're going to put two teaspoons, I believe it's right, two teaspoons of ground ginger. You can use the powder, but I would recommend the um, fresh ginger. It's just better for you, right? It's good. Two teaspoons of ginger. Now, we're going to put two cups of water and I'm using bottled water because the chlorine levels even though we've got a filter on our our water I have done this before where it took I couldn't get I could hardly get it fermenting and I just know when because that time I used uh, water out of the tap so use bottled water or leave some water out to let it set and let the chlorine evaporate off of it and the fluoride I, I don't know if you can I don't know think fluoride will evaporate off but definitely the chlorine will and so that's what's going to keep your um, your fermentation from the bacteria from growing so we're going to put in two cups this is 16 ounces of bottled water or filtered water Woo, splashing all right now we have basically all you're going to need right here now we're going to put in 10 raisins. Golden raisins. There you go. That is your ginger bug or plant, whatever you'd like to call it. <coughs> Excuse me. You will have to um, burp this every day and cover it with a dishcloth. So it stays a little darker. You want to keep it in a warm place, kind of out of direct sunlight. And I just wrap it in a towel and set it right over here on my counter. The acid and lemon juice will dissolve that sugar up in no time. Here you go. That is your ginger bug. That's the first part of it. Now, get rid of those raisins. Okay, what we're going to do is it says you place your raisins, your lemon juice, your pulp, your ginger, your sugar, and your water in the jar. Combine it all. Um, keep it out of direct sunlight. Check your jar every couple of days for bubbling. Once this bubbling occurs, when this happens, fermentation has occurred. You will need to burp your jar. Just pop the top, or unscrew the top, and let it let some of the um, the gases escape. The raisins will be floating when it when fermentation has completely occurred. Your raisins will be floating at the top, and it will get real bubbly. And I'll bring you back and show you that. It'll take, it says, approximately four to seven days from the recipe. But I'm going to tell you, in wintertime, like it is right now, even though it's warm in our kitchen, it, has, it took me, I would say it took 
14 to 21 days on the last one. Now, the one I did in the fall when it was nice and warm, it was four to seven days, maybe a little over seven days. But it, you know, it fermented really fast. But the last one I did in the middle of the winter, mm -mm, it was slow. So, just watch for that. You may have to let it go. Okay. Once the fermentation has started, then you're going to start feeding it. You'll give it two teaspoons of ginger and four teaspoons of sugar every day at the same time of the day. Now, where I got this recipe from, and I have looked and looked and looked, it was a blog recipe, and I have tried to find it everywhere. I wrote it down, and I can't find it. But they said to be very, very careful about feeding it at the same time of the day. They, she would even set her, um, her uh, timer on her phone and so that she wouldn't kill it. But I didn't have that problem because I forgot to feed it quite a few times, and it was fine. So I think as long as you get it in within 24 hours, you're good. Okay, but you're going to feed it every day once fermentation begins, the same time of day. You'll feed it for 7 to 10 days until the mixture is frothy and bubbling and then ready to make your beer. So, when this gets uh, fermenting and getting frothy and bubbly and I start to feed it, I'll bring it back and show you how we do that. All right, I'm going to put this in a bag, this extra ginger, and this is what I will feed my ginger plant for the next couple of weeks. Okay, bye guys. Not by. I just remembered that I really didn't explain to you about ginger beer. I know I talked about it in the um, my video on pumpkin roll, and I sort of explained it, but I thought, well, I didn't explain it in this video, so I should. This is a bottle. It was a bottle of some type of German um, Christmas wine. But anyways, I just saved all. I've been saving all of my bottles that I could save, and um, with screw tops. busy. Anyways, I wanted to show you guys. Let's see. I want you to be able to see. It's, yeah, it's carbonated. It ferments and it carbonates itself. There's no alcohol in it. It's really good. And it's good for you. It's a good way to get um, a fermented beverage into your kids. And ginger is so phenomenal for your body. It's one of those superfoods. So, as you'll see, there is a little bit of sediment in the bottom. So, you do get a little bit of ginger. Just depends on how fine your strainer is when you're straining everything out. But, yeah. So, it's really good. It's so healthy for you. There's no alcohol in it. You can add alcohol to make, you know, a Moscow mule or a uh, Tennessee mule. But, by itself, it's completely alcohol-free. Because you're only going to let it ferment like a month or so. If you let it go longer than that, then yes, it could turn into a mild alcohol, alcoholic beverage. But like it is right now, it's completely alcohol-free and completely safe for your kids to drink. And my kids adore it. They love it. They're constantly going, Mom, do you have ginger beer? Do you have ginger beer? Are you making ginger beer? So, this is something you need to do for your kids. They will thank you. Cheers. Mmm.